So I see you on Instagram, you're traveling to New York, LA, Miami, overseas. Not yet. You haven't gone overseas? I, no, I need to. Okay. I plan on it. Okay. That's the goal of mine for 2019. Okay. So you've been like traveling though for a while. Oh, I love traveling. Yes. What, what do you love about traveling? <sighs> Meeting new people. Um, seeing new places, I feel like, you know, God gave us this beautiful earth, we need to go and explore it. Um, it brings me fulfillment, and you get a different perspective on how other people live, and it's very inspirational uh, to want to do better. Right. You know, so you can travel more. There's just um, a euphoric feeling in traveling and seeing a different place, and we kind of live in a gray area. And I mean that with the lack of sun. So I love the sun, so I need to go to it. So that's why I love to travel. So I want to see, like, like yeah, I've done, like, domestic, Miami, L.A., you know, over and over and over and over again. New York. Um, Hamptons. Hamptons, yeah. I've never been there. It's, a, it's, a, it's interesting. It's cool. It's chill. Um, <laughs> Puerto Rico, it's cool. Um, Jamaica, Bahamas, beautiful. I love clear water. The Caribbean is absolutely gorgeous. But I want to see Iceland. I want to see Greece. I want to see Egypt. I want to see Dubai. So I have a lot of houses to sell so I can find those trips. So right. I right. Be busy. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so do I. <laughs> Spain, England. I have really good friends in England. LK okay. and Garrett, I plan on visiting you. We're supposed to go skiing in the Swiss Alps. Whenever we plan that trip, so. Okay, yeah. okay. So, traveling is something big for you. You love exercising. Oh, I do CrossFit and I get trained. So, I do CrossFit probably four to five times a week. And then I'll get personally trained twice a week. What's, what's has, like, have, you know, what have that been like for you? Like, the ups and downs of CrossFit, you learning? I get injured a lot in CrossFit. So, that's why I started to get personally trained. Just, like, strengthen the parts of my body that are compensating and why I'm getting injured. Okay. But that's a feeling of um, hard work and like the gratification is the soreness or the, you know, the features on your body like taking shape. Like that's a form of progression, which I think I definitely have an addiction to. Okay. So that's what that is to me. What type of music do you like? Do you like rap? I really like intense music. When you chilling, listen to John Mayer. He's too chill. Like, when you're just chilling, though, I'm talking yeah. when you just like riding, like I'm chilling. You like to listen to hype music. Yeah, like EDM. Okay. <laughs> okay. I listen to EDM, or I, I'm very big on like lyrical music. I love Kendrick Lamar. I the love recipe. You ever, what's the recipe? Oh, you never saw it. J Cole. You never listen to that song by Kendrick Lamar? It's no, called I will. The recipe. I like Drake. It's a, it has a lyric video online. You should check it out. Okay, I'll check that out. Absolutely. But I think like the way they tell their story, it's like 2014 Forest Hills Drive. Powerful. 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 I can listen to that. I have from beginning to end. And I'm just like, like, hello, apparently, like, just good. Like, he poured his soul out and it was able to be received. Like, yes. that's, I like that type of music. Like, I know Maroon 5 songs about Jane. That album was very influential to me when I was younger. Green Day, American Idiot was a very big album to me. <laughs> Like, honestly, like, <laughs> the lyrics are very poetic, you know? Did you listen to Papa Roach? I did. I'm sorry, I like them. <laughs> Scars. Yeah, that's what I know from them. But um, anything that's like, um, you could be, I, the only way I can explain it is like, music gives you a high, that high, maybe it's like that riff in that solo, like right. a guitar solo or something like that, like, I like Lady Gaga. Like, she's, she's weird, so I like her. But I can't listen to John Mayer by myself. Well, you know, Ed Sheeran, he's awesome. He's beautiful. <laughs> I think his, his, his words are very poetic in his songs. Um, but yeah, I'd say rap and then EDM. Okay, okay. Intense. I want, I want to feel the music. So when you listen to music, like you said, you want to feel the music and... When you were going through, you know, some of your tough times in life, mm -hmm. did you go back to music mm -hmm. or did you not go to music? A very good point. So it differentiates between my mood. Um, music can, can sway you to feel good or feel bad. 
So like if I was going through like a breakup, I would not listen to music because I did not want to feel bad. Right. Because you don't want to. You had a major, you know, breakup. Ah, uh, I wouldn't give him that much credit. But I, 2017 <laughs> was a very hard year for me because a lot of, um, a lot of hard things happened that year. Within a 12 month span, it was probably the most difficult part of my life. Did you see it coming? No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see another coming. I was like, this was like the under tsunami. Like I was literally like the skyscraper on the coastline and smashed. Right, right. You know, with life. Right. But it made me who I am today, and I would not trade the experience in this world for my my whole life is is led up to this, and I'm thankful for that. Every trial, I can't wait to have another overcoming. You know. Right. Hopefully, it's not terrible, but you know, you know what I mean. Right. What happened? You through the twelve month span. What happened that okay. you can share? Absolutely, I'm an open book. So, um, 2017 was very hard. I went through. Uh, in the 12 span, like a 12 month span, I went through a breakup, I went through uh, my grandfather passing, and then I almost, uh, I almost passed with, I was in the hospital with a kidney infection. How did you find out you had the kidney infection? Um, so I thought it was muscular because I do CrossFit so much. I thought my back was just sore from doing deadlifts and like, you know, push presses or whatever. And, um, it started to, the pain started to spread from not only my left side to my right side and then to my front. And I was like, I'm not doing any heavy lifting in the front of my body. So I was like, this is strange. I was like, something's going on. I didn't right. know if it was like appendix thing or if that's even the right side where my appendix is. I don't know. It was my spleen swelling. Okay. We'll get to that. Um, I was actually in the middle of writing a contract for a multiple offer property foreclosure okay. for one of my clients and I couldn't get through it. It's June and it's like 90 degrees out. It's Memorial Day weekend. Right. And I'm shivering. I'm like, I have no energy. Like I'm lethargic. I can't stay awake. And that's not me. Right. I, I think I did CrossFit like that Friday. This is Sunday. Right. And, um, I'm just shivering. Um, I had to take a hot shower in between. A contract is only 13 pages long. I could type it in five minutes. I could not get through it. I was laying in my bed, had a robe on, had a blow dryer on me to stay warm. And I remember like just passing. I finished it. I sent it over to DocuSign. And then I remember just laying there like, oh my God, like I can't handle this right now. I remember my body just being like, like, it felt like I was dying. Like, it felt bad. I, nothing shut down. But, like, I felt terrible. And I called my... I started vomiting, too. It was like... Ooh. Yeah, that was like, what is going on? So, um, I called my mom. And I said, Mom, this is bad. Like, I need to go to the hospital. She starts freaking out. She knows me. Like, I don't go to a doctor. Right. You know, I am a... a fine. You know, I'm not... You're going to out. I'm not a hypochondriac. I do not do that. Right. Um, so she starts freaking out. She's like, oh my God, you know, she's like, I'll be there. Takes me to the ER. I get it. I get into the ER. They take my blood and that's when they find out, like they said, we can't quantify your white count because it's too high. You're getting admitted to the hospital. What? Yeah. So I guess, I don't know. I can't, can't remember from bio, but your white count indicates your body is fighting an infection. Right. And it was super high. So I get, I was like, what? I was like, I have plans. I am not staying the night at a hospital. Right. I was mad. I was ready to take out this IV and throw it on the ground and leave. I was like, there's no way they're admitting me. But like, you if you were 100, 103, they start, they, start, right. yeah, they start shooting me up with antibiotics. Nothing was breaking it. I, I, it was Memorial Day. I had plans. So they admitted me to the hospital. I remember they got me a room. I was the youngest person on the floor. I was 27, and they told me, they said, if you would have waited 10 more hours, you would have went septic. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. I was like, what? What's septic? You know? What is that? I guess it's when an infection spills into your bloodstream. Not good. No. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So. So you were biting that. And you were in the hospital for you said six days, almost a week. Yeah. 
103 fever for six days. How did you, what was like your thought process like that, through that day? That was a mental boot camp. That was mentally trying. Like what? You have anything like that happened that you're like, oh my God, is this ever going to end? Yeah, I was crying. Like it was just mental. Like I, I did not cry a lot. But when you're in that circumstance where you're, t I remember I had several IVs in my, in my arm and you're alone and it's dark in your room and <clears throat> I'm not watching anything on TV like, and I'm, sh I'm thrashing because it's so, like your body's shivering so much and you can't get warm and I remember I watched the clock, it was 8pm to 10pm, I shivered for 10, two hours straight. Like that is, it's torture. And I, I hate to be dramatic, but thank God I made it out. And I'm right. sure people have been through worse things. But that was my trial. Like, that was very hard for me. And just sitting there, not being able to move, and then when you laid out flat for so many days, your lungs start to, um, like, reduce. I don't right. know. Like, I couldn't run. It took me a while to get my endurance back. Like, I tried to walk around the hospital, and I had no stamina. And I'm used to crossfitting every day. Like it was, I remember I cried after that, like, wow, I don't even have the ability to walk around a hospital. So. And I vowed to myself when I was there, and I remember laying there, and I couldn't even, like, I couldn't eat. You don't eat anything. I remember I was like, I'm going to live life so much harder if I ever get back to normal. Or I was like, day three. I'm like, I'm never going to settle. <laughs> I am never going to let you know, anything hold me down. If I want to do something crazy, like, I'll do it. Crazy meaning, like, you know, I know have you good goals. Right, I know what you mean. Um, if I want to travel to Bali, I'm going to make it happen. If I want to own this, like, I'm, all right, I'm going to figure out how to do it. You know, if I want to be a top producer in Pittsburgh, I'm going to figure out how to do it. So, that was definitely a driving force behind right. it. Right, so... After you recovered and you got your feet, you know, wet again mm -hmm. and you're back working that again. That was hard. Yeah. Tell I was working from my hospital bed. Like, my clients didn't even know. You were still working at the hospital. Yeah, I was, I was typing with his hand on my phone. I remember. This one. <laughs> what? Yeah. What are you thinking? <laughs> I was like, I gotta get this stuff done. <laughs> I, I, I think I closed on 12 properties that month. It was summer. <clears throat> and... You closed those properties, and you were fighting that problem you had, and also you were going through, you know, just your mental is probably messed up. You're trying to get back to normal. Yeah. What was like a way that you? Was it something new you developed there, like a new outlet? You started doing something different after you left the hospital. You mentioned Afterwards. you mentioned that you like you took every day like it was your last type days. You're going to live yeah. every day to the fullest. Yeah. So is this something like that you kind of... I try to, but it's hard to keep that consistency because you can get burned out. Because um, I know that I went through a period of time after that where it was hard to get back to normal. You know, I fell completely off the mountain with my stamina. I was healing. Like it took a toll on my body. How long did it take for you to fully recover? That you said, like, I'm back to someone near... I was before. I'd say three months. So from June to like maybe September? Yeah. October ish? Yeah. September, October. Mm -hmm. And so you came into 2018, like I'm going to live every day like it was my, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to have yeah. fun. You know, like you're going to live life to the fullest. Absolutely. So that day changed, that thing, that event that happened to you changed your life. All those events did. I mean, that year made me who I am. So. So you going through all that, mm -hmm. what was your mindset coming into 2018? Um, well, I'd say my mindset up to this summer because it happened in this June. Right. Right, right, this summer. Yeah, 18. Coming like, uh, what's your I mindset? Can, I can conquer anything. Okay. Like, I, anything, like it's not unobtainable. I can do it. You know, how dare someone try to stop me? And if someone does try to stop me and I can overcome that, then that makes me 10 times better. Like everything is a trial error, trial error. Like I, I need to learn more, I need to mess up more, I need to learn more, become more efficient. Like I'm just getting started. Like I haven't even done anything great yet. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I'm just no, you scratching have. the surface. You're gonna go to another level though. I'm hoping. I I'm see trying. it. I'm climbing every day. I see it though, and the way you talk and the I passion. Feel I, I feel it. I feel it. I'll yeah. get there. Yeah. But I'm not satisfied. 
You're not satisfied. I like yeah, like I like you know, not yet. Okay, so I always ask these questions. I got a few that I want to know about you. Yes. And what you, you know, what you think? Mm-hmm. Would you rather make fifty thousand dollars a year, stress free, mm-hmm. no problems, everything's cool? Would you rather make five hundred thousand? But you're going to have stress and you're going to be, you know, more stressful with that type of money. And my perspective on it is if you're making that type of money, Mm -hmm. if you want to make that type of money, you're going to have stress regardless if you make $500,000 or $50,000. It's going to be some stress. But this is just a question I'm asking. Would you rather make $50,000 a year stress-free or $500,000 stressful? Depends on the stress, but $500,000 stressful. Can you explain why? Uh, what is the influence of stress? Is it someone like, in your life that you can get rid of, or is it? It's like, more like work stress, like maybe like oh, yeah. people bothering you. I'm ready you. to make. Yeah, I'm trying to do that, so I know that I'm gonna have stress. Like I'm ready. Yeah, that's okay. what I work. That's what I want. Yeah. Okay, so what are some people you like you look up to now, like or some muses that or inspiration? That you look up to? Uh, my influences, number one, definitely my grandpa. Okay. Um, I guess celebrity wise, definitely I love Kanye West. Okay. Just not because of his like political affiliations, but because <laughs> he is who he, he is. Right. You know, I like him. I like Charlemagne the God. I like Elon Musk. Yep. He literally slept in his office until he created PayPal. That guy. Um, we're, we're about to order a futon here. Dead serious. Really? Go ahead. Yeah, I have to. See? I have to. Have to. Um, I like Mark Cuban. He's cool. Barbara Kukorin. Um, well, it just depends. You know, those probably... Elon and Connie are probably the main ones. Okay. Yeah. So you like their just different personalities? Elon's who he is. Yeah, right. absolutely. I like Joe Rogan. He's okay. <laughs> okay. So, what's something like you would want to leave for people to, you know, know about you, mm-hmm. and something you can give, uh, you know, a message to the, the people young, uh, underneath you, the younger generation. Like what about you, me. Yeah. And how you would inspire them? Like what's uh, the doing the right thing, being honest to a fault, because people, I feel like it takes so much time. And energy to be dishonest. Yeah. That doesn't even mean with a lie. Be who you are. You know, you trying to be someone else is a form of dishonesty. Yeah. Be vulnerable a little bit. Yes. You know, I feel like our um, generation, uh, we're very masked. Yes. And I think that we need to just be me. Right. Um, And it makes it harder to connect with people when you're not who you are. Okay. Um, Just be a little bit vulnerable. Be okay to get hurt. Because you're not going to die from getting hurt. You can make it out. You can become better. Don't be afraid. Uh, people suffer with anxiety a lot. Not to say that I don't have it. Right. But I feel like it holds people back. Um, boundaries are created in your mind. Boundaries don't exist. Right. So, don't... What's holding you back? Really, become aware of what's holding you back. And get rid of it. Okay. Yeah. So boundaries are, are are a perception, and you can apply that to all part, parts of your life. Be comfortable with being uncomfortable. I like that. Yeah. I like that one. I like that one too. That's what I would want. Them. Don't be afraid. Okay. You, know, you want to be something? Do it. Do it. So, I would love to give you a shout out, and I'm honored that you came and Please spoke with us. And you're definitely coming back next season. Love to. Because I want to know exactly what, what happened. Did yeah. I do it? What happened since <laughs> then to now. Yeah. But I appreciate you taking your time out and coming to the studio and really helping us out and giving your story. It was such a blessing to be a part of it. Thank I you. appreciate being here anytime. Gotcha. Thank you.